So we've been able to understand a lot more about the role of genetics through adoption studies and twin studies. And what we found is that genetics play approximately 50% of a role in the uh, development of alcohol use disorder. But really it's a combination of uh, environment and genetics, so nature and nurture, that contribute to the onset of alcohol use disorder. So with alcohol use disorder, even if a person does not have a genetic predisposition to develop uh, this disorder, uh, environmental factors can still contribute to the onset of the condition. Um, we know that different types of learning, operant conditioning, classical conditioning, social learning, are all parts of the ways that we learn our different behaviors, including how we adapt to stress, how we socialize, things along those lines. And these types of learning can contribute to the development of alcohol use disorder over the course of time. So the environmental factors, including uh, the environment that people grow up in, uh, family environment, social environment that they uh, interact with, all of these things can contribute to that learning process and shape the development of an alcohol use disorder. You know, it's interesting. I, I, global deaths, uh, there's been a high level that's been attributed to alcohol. There's um, a high incidence of uh, alcohol-related deaths. A large part of it is related to binge drinking as well. And I suspect that part of it may be just related to the fact that in society, alcohol doesn't carry as much of a stigma. Any kind of use disorder oftentimes does, but the opioids, they do. Pain does. You know, a lot of times, uh, psychological issues, pain, things along those lines, they carry a certain stigma with them, whereas alcohol doesn't necessarily have as strong of a stigma. And I suspect that that may be part of it. So that's strongly contraindicated. Um, the, the use of the opiates, when, or excuse me, use of alcohol when somebody is taking opiates uh, can be extremely harmful. Um, in addition to uh, the fact that the, one of the biggest things that the alcohol can do is, particularly as somebody's going to bed at night, it can contribute to respiratory depression, it can lead to sudden death, so it can be particularly dangerous. Oftentimes, the opioid-related deaths, it's rarely just opiates by themselves, but it's opioid combined with something else. Oftentimes, benzodiazepines or there may be alcohol as well, uh, but they oftentimes do get labeled as an opioid-related death. What goes into that determination uh, in terms of why opiate gets listed first opposed to alcohol mixed with opiates or benzodiazepines mixed with opiates, I wouldn't be able to tell you that, but you know, certainly there is a, a bias there.